morning and welcome to worship. If you have found us here, then good job. Wherever you are in your worshiping this morning or whatever time you're worshiping with us, we are so glad that you are here. I am Pastor Jesse. I am the interim, interim senior pastor of Fairmount Presbyterian Church. And this is the day the Lord has made. In Nehemiah 8.10, there's a verse that I've always loved that said, the joy of the Lord is our strength. May the joy of the Lord be our strength this day during Easter tide as we celebrate the resurrection. We'll begin with a call to worship. We enter a virtual gathering space once again this season. We worship together in spirit and in truth though not in person. We pray, sing, and listen to God's word despite the fear that pervades our community. We trust Christ's peace, a peace freely given, despite our doubts and fears. We know the Holy Spirit is among us, blowing with a hopeful wind of change. We feel the presence of Christ, the one who died and rose again, and brings us eternal life. We submit to God's leading in this time of transformation. We experience the joy of Easter morning when we celebrate all God has in store for us. have sin, then we deceive only ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But when we confess our sin, God, who is merciful and just, will forgive us. Please join me in this prayer. Gentle shepherd, you guide us in right paths. You lead us in the ways of righteousness. But we have allowed our anger, our greed, and at times even hate to direct our paths. We have overreacted. We have taken more than our share. We have despised others that seem to have it all. Forgive us, God, for not following your ways. Forgive us for not remembering that we are your sheep and you are our shepherd. Forgive us when we have not listened for your voice 
and instead have acted in the ways of the world. Guide us back to your path, to loving you and loving our neighbors. Help us to unclench our fists and lend out our hands in hope and healing, forgiveness and love. In the name of Christ, our shepherd, we pray. Amen.
Friends, the good shepherd lays down his life, the sheep. The good shepherd knows the sheep, and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep so that the sheep may live. We are a part of that flock. We are a part of Christ's body. In Christ, we find wholeness and restoration. So go forth and share this good news. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Hello, everybody. It's good to be with you again today. The story that we're going to hear from Pastor Jesse in just a moment is from the book of Acts. And the book of Acts comes after the Gospels, so after Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So it's the story of the people who were followers of Jesus or who were interested in Jesus' message, even if they'd never met him but they knew of his life and they knew of Easter morning and of his resurrection. And so what happened is that these followers got together because they needed other people who knew about Jesus to be with. And so I have this picture. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it. Hopefully we can zoom in and you can see that pretty well. But what happened is these followers got together and they would share meals together and they would share the things that they owned. They owned everything in common together. And they would worship together and they would pray together. Sometimes they'd pray by themselves, but they do a lot of this stuff together. And that is how the church started, right? A bunch of people coming together, talking about God and how to keep following Jesus, even though he wasn't living with them anymore. Well, in a lot of ways, our church is like that first church. And in some ways, feels pretty different right now, doesn't it? We're used to coming to church on a Sunday morning, and there are lots of people around, people that we know, some people that we don't know. We can say hello, we can give them a high five, a hug, maybe we have some snacks together or something good to drink. But we're not doing that right now, are we? We're having church. You're looking at me, and I'm in the sanctuary, but there's hardly anybody in here with me. And you're at home, probably, with your family, having church there. So that feels very different. But you know what? You've still got people around you that you can talk to about God, that you can ask questions, that you can say, why did this happen? Or I wonder what Jesus meant by that. Or how do you think we could follow Jesus? One of the things that I talked about that they, the followers did was they shared things. You can share things too. Now, I know that seems a little bit weird when we're not really supposed to go anywhere. How do you share something? But you can share your joy. I know you've got chalk at home. You can be painting the sidewalks, sharing your joy. You might still have your fish bank that we passed out a long time ago. You can still be putting change in that because someday we'll come together and we can gather those fish banks and send that money to people who need it. There are lots of ways that you can share. You can also pray. You can pray with your family. You can pray on a Zoom call. You can pray by yourself. But there are lots of ways that we can keep being Jesus' followers, even if we don't come to this building for a while. So friends, I hope that you'll think about some ways you might do that this week. And if you'd like to share them with me, I would love to hear about it. That's another way you can share the good news, is by sending letters or emails or Zoom messages to tell people how much you love them, how much you're thinking about them, and that God is with them. So lots of things that you can do this week to be a part of our church community in the world, in your home. Friends, will you join me in prayer? Will you close your eyes and repeat after me? Loving God, thank you for always being with us. Help us to share what we have and to see you everywhere. Help us to share that joy and that love. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all.
Let us bow before God for a moment of prayer. Lord, we want to hear your voice. We want to know your ways. We seek now to listen for your word, and we pray for the courage to act upon what the Spirit is saying to your church. Amen. The scripture reading today comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need, day by day. As they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of God for the people of God. The last week of January, I sat next to a woman on an airplane who was wearing a mask. I didn't think much about it at the time as we headed out to a Presbyterian camp in New Mexico for a few days of respite hiking, reading, yoga, and an intriguing class called Paperless Music, led by an organization called Music Makes Community. The theme was a natural fit for my husband, a pastor who often sings and plays guitar during his services, but not so much for me, or at least that's what I believed. The first time our group met, before we had even introduced ourselves around the circle, we began to make music. Our beguiling leader taught us in layers, adding on tone and instrument, pulling out rhythm and words, so that when we were done with the newly created song, we were already a joyful community before we even knew one another's names. Day by day, we added to the songs and continued to weave the threads of holy, beloved, though temporary, community. Recently, I recalled that experience during a conversation on what church might look like when we eventually returned to common spaces, how we might do music without the use of paper and hymnals offering without the passing of plates, greeting without handshaking, communion without touching, baptism with water and blessing from a distance, sitting together but apart. Even after the revised and renewed stay-at-home order expires on May 29th, many may be more comfortable meeting in small groups and attending worship online. We will be a church both gathered and scattered at the same time, not unlike the early church empowered by the Holy Spirit more than 2,000 years ago. The book of Acts from which I read in the New Testament was written by the gospel writer Luke, the author of the gospel by the same name. It's a continuation of the story, and in the 28 chapters of Acts, we hear powerful descriptions of what can happen when God-breathed power descends on ordinary people trying to follow Jesus. It's a history of the early church from the resurrection of Jesus through the date of the death of Paul the Apostle. There are dramatic stories of tongues of fire and mass evangelism and healings and miracles and shipwrecks and journeys and church conflicts and compromises, successful missions and deadly mistakes. And it all forms a varied picture 
of the beloved community of God's people making their way in the world, trying to figure out what the next right thing for them is to do. It's a wild ride, and choosing a story at, at random from within the book of Acts could very well lead a person to think that these Christians had very strange lives indeed, singing their way out of prison, stopped on roads by blinding lights, threatened with being thrown overboard, struck down by the Spirit, and speaking in ways that no one around them could understand. But those are stories for another day. Today, we have these few summary verses, and they are so important because in them we see a particular set of practices that nurtured their lives as Christians, as the very first Christians. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers, four actions that led to profound transformation simple actions that we can continue to do, that we are continuing to do today, even as we are both gathered and scattered at the same time. The first is learning God's word. And if you are joining us for worship virtually, you're already attending to God's word, both spoken and sung. And in addition, some of you have told me you've started to read the Bible again, and, or maybe for the first time on your own, a chapter a day in the Gospels, or one psalm at a time before you go to sleep. Jesus is revealed in those scriptures. The second simple action is what the Bible calls fellowship, which is taking the time to nurture relationships close enough that you can share your concerns and feel encouragement. We can't gather like we used to over meals and coffee, but we're using phones and computers and talking over backyard fences with neighbors to support one another. Jesus is revealed in those relationships. The third simple action to nourish faith is the breaking of bread. Today we celebrate communion virtually for a second time. This is a gift. It's a gift available to us now through technology that was not available the last time that Fairmount ceased meeting for worship due to a global pandemic 100 years ago. In this sacrament of communion, the gospel is portrayed more in actions and words that we see it in the broken body, in the shed blood. Jesus is revealed in the breaking of the bread and the cup of the of salvation on the communion table and on your kitchen tables today. And the fourth action is prayer. Prayers we know by heart, like our Father who art in heaven, psalms that become prayers, like the Lord is my shepherd, daily prayers for one another and prayers that, that God's Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf, says for us when we have no words. Jesus is revealed, made known in those prayers. I appreciate the, the clarity and the brevity of, in this time of confusion. I appreciate the clarity and brevity of those four simple things in this liminal space we are all in learning God's word, supporting each other, eating together, and praying for one another and our broken world. This time of worldwide suffering cannot be lived alone, and our crisis is opportunity for transformation. Desmond Tutu, writing during another troubling time, said this, we are living in a historic moment. We are each called to take part in a great transformation. Our survival as a species is threatened by global warming, economic meltdown, and an ever-increasing gap between rich and poor. Yet these threats offer an opportunity to awaken as an interconnected and beloved community. And of course, it was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who popularized the notion of beloved community, a community he saw as a society based on justice and equal opportunity and love of one's fellow human being. The King Center, founded by Coretta Scott King, explains that 
Dr. King's beloved community is a global vision in which all people share in the wealth of the earth, that in the beloved community, poverty, hunger, and homelessness will not be tolerated because international standards of human decency will not allow it. Racism and all forms of discrimination, bigotry, and prejudice will be replaced by an all-inclusive spirit of sisterhood and brotherhood. And that's the same spirit. The same spirit I see in the lives of the early Christians as told in the book of Acts, creating beloved community even as it seems just out of reach, weaving the fabric of equality and inclusiveness and justice in response to the voice of the shepherd Jesus Christ. We are not there yet. And we need to keep working toward justice with heart and mind and soul. But there's something else, too. There's something that you can hear around the edges in the gospel when Jesus talks about abundant life, when he plays with children, when he teases the disciples, when he attends weddings and when he tells us to notice the flowers and the birds, it's, it's something we can easily overlook even in the short passage we have before us today at the heart of the Christian faith embodied in the path of justice and central to the birth and the flourishing of the church, there is joy. Do you see it? Listen. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Glad and generous hearts, while other translations say, exuberant and joyful. This during a time in the first century when being a Christian was not easy, when being a, a human was not easy. And yet, because of Jesus at the very foundation of that community, there was joy, maybe even laughter and play and singing. And the Lord added daily to their number those who were being saved. I guess it shouldn't surprise us that there's a connection between joy and salvation. For more than 100 years, Fairmount has been a place where conversation and laughter bounce off the walls before, during, and after worship, an inclusive community where the voices of children, seniors, and seekers of all kinds are cherished. This congregation has sheltered the abused and fed the hungry, embraced the mentally ill, and found the presence of God in those whose minds have succumbed to dementia and whose bodies weaken with age and illness. You have grieved those who've gone too soon. You have led strong and sacrificial efforts to become the beloved community as envisioned by Dr. King and others, and, and you have given generously to make it so. Yet at the same time, there has also been petting zoos and strawberry festivals, karaoke and movies and Christmas dinners and hymn sings and now a virtual variety show. You find the joy and the playfulness even in the important gospel work that you are about, even in your daily life. You want to laugh and sing and be creative while you are making a difference. And that is a strength. It's a strength that comes from God's spirit at work within you. It comes from your willingness to weave the threads of holy, beloved community over and over again. A therapist friend recently told me a story of his six-year-old daughter who said to him one day a few weeks ago, Daddy, 
the coronavirus is bad, right? Yes, he said, a, a lot of people are sick and, and have died. But she said, can there be good too? Because if, if I wasn't home so much, I may not have learned to ride my bike. And friends, I think even as we wonder about what's ahead and we adjust to this new and aggravating normal, which may indeed involve suffering, may we keep doing all the things that nourish our faith, learning God's word, supporting each other, sharing the table, praying simple things, and along the way, let's also find the joy and the playfulness at the heart of the Christian gospel. Playfulness is a spiritual discipline that uncovers God's fountain of joy within us. In our own faith community, when a violent act was committed in the presence of our children and caused trauma, we called on the music therapists and the art therapists to help them heal. And we kept singing and creating and writing and drawing and sharing. So in this time of collective trauma, we are going to need the artists. We're going to need the music makers and the comedians and the poets to help us form beloved community over and over again, to help us heal, to help us play, to help us learn something new. Poetry has been speaking to me a lot lately, and one that's gone around a reading lately. I keep coming back to it. It was written by Kitty O'Meara during the time of the cholera outbreak and republished, republished during the 1918 flu pandemic, the last time Fairmount Church closed its doors. She wrote these words. And the people stayed home and read books and listened and rested and exercised and made art and played games and learned new ways of being and were still and listened more deeply. Some meditated, some prayed, some danced, some met their shadows. And the people began to think differently. And the people healed. And in the absence of people living in ignorant, dangerous, mindless, and heartless ways, the earth began to heal. And when the danger passed, the people joined together again. They grieved their losses and made new choices and dreamed new images and created new ways to live and heal the earth fully as they had been healed. Friends, day by day, may we add to the songs and continue to weave the threads of holy, beloved community. And day by day, may God add to our number those who are being saved. Amen. Friends, there are a lot of ways that we can participate in joy as a church community beyond these walls. And so I have a list of announcements of things for you to know, to pay attention to, to be aware of. The first is that we are, as Jesse mentioned, having a church variety show. If you are watching this on Sunday, May 3rd, that's the day of the variety show. It's at 4 o'clock. You do need to RSVP by 2 p.m. And you can find information on how to do that on our Facebook or you can email Amy Kim. And we'll also be recording it to post it later. So we hope that you can join us for that. I know the Heron Lewis boys cooking something up. You, I just don't even know. Anyway, hopefully that'll be joyful. We're also going to have another hymn sing coming up in the middle of May, so stay tuned for more information about that. I also want you to know that the Serve Council 
has made some more votes on sending money, and so they have sent $500 to the Abundance Food Pantry at Forest Hills Presbyterian Church. That donation is to help buy hygiene items, which are harder for people to find and pay for. And so we're happy to be able to support our sister church in that work. We also sent $500 to the Providence House. Providence House is a crisis nursery that's committed to child abuse prevention and family preservation in the Cleveland area. They have had to rehome their ch the children that they were caring for at the house at the beginning of this crisis, and they're continuing to try to provide support services to those families, while at the same time see seeing a spike in referrals for their services. So we're glad to support them in the work that, we are, that they are doing. We also are so thankful for the many of you who are continuing to write checks, to fulfill your pledges, all of that. We are so grateful for the ways in which you are giving to the life of this congregation that we might continue to give within our community. So thank you and keep it up, we hope. We're also looking forward to someday publishing our Fairmount Presbyterian Church directory. And we need your help in finishing that project. That's a project that feels like it's been a long time in coming. <laughs> right, <laughs> and yeah. it's not here nice. yet, but someday we will have the directory, but we do need your help to finish it. If you weren't able to sit for a picture, you can send your picture to Christine uh, in the church office. There's more information about that on our Facebook, on our e-news, on all of the ways you find information about us. Uh, but we would love for you to log on to Realm and to check that your information is correct. And if you've got a picture or a Facebook picture you can send to us, we would love to have that as well. We also are excited that some members of our congregation are going to help us put together a community sourced poem uh, about what we're learning in this time. So look for more information about that. We hope that you'll all participate in making that kind of art and that kind of poetry together. Also, the Hunger Network typically has a walk in June. Well, they're not walking together outside, but they are having a virtual walk. So if you go to our website, our Facebook, you can find more information about how to donate to Fairmount's team that, again, walking virtually, uh, but it's a wonderful way to raise money for the Hunger Network in this area. We also are thankful for the folks who are with us today helping to lead worship this morning for Matt Bickett, Gianna Peng, Mary Grace Corrigan, Alicia Ruby, Jason Jedlica, Sean McGrath, Mike Chevro, Sam Wetzel, and Leah Wyman. We're so glad that all of you are here today. And then we transition <laughs> from all of those joyful announcements to this joyful feast that's been prepared. Friends, you can pause us if you don't have bread or English muffin or donut or anything like that in front of you. Go get it. Bring it back. Because we're about to have communion together. It's kind of a strange way that we're doing it. But somehow, Christ unites us all. The first followers worshipped anywhere they could. And so today, we worship virtually together. Us here, you in your homes, we are so grateful that Christ comes to this table, prepares this table in your home, that together we might have our eyes opened in the breaking of the bread and know that Christ is among us. Friends, we invite you to join us for communion. Would you bow your heads for prayer? It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord, our God, creator and ruler of the universe. You are our shepherd, O Lord, and in you there is nothing we lack. You lead us to green pastures and still waters. You restore our souls. You prepare a table before us. The cup of blessing overflows. Therefore, we praise you. We join our voices with choirs of angels and prophets and apostles and martyrs and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. We are the sheep of your pasture and Christ Jesus is the gate. He came that we might have abundant life. Therefore, we listen for that voice and we seek to follow. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, 
We take from your creation this bread and this juice and joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and with your church and all the world. And like the first believers, fill us with the awe and wonder of your presence as we devote ourselves to your teaching and fellowship to the breaking of bread and prayer, sharing what we have and giving to those who are in need. Hear us as we pray the prayer your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, glory. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was to be betrayed, took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of salvation, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you drink of this, do so remembering me. Friends, every time that you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim Christ's life-saving death until he comes again. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the children of God. Thanks be to God. As we close with prayer, I want to remind you, the staff would love to be praying with and for you in this coming week. So if you have any prayer requests, joys, concerns, anything, you can share them on the chat on the Facebook Live, or you can email Amy Kim or any of us, and we would be happy, honored, to be praying with you. So friends, let us lift our hearts together. Spirit of Christ, you have blessed our tables and our lives. 
May the eating of this bread give us courage to speak faith and act love, not only in church sanctuaries, but in your precious world. And may the drinking of this cup renew our hope, even in the midst of pandemic. Wrap your hopeful presence around all whose bodies, spirits, and hearts need healing. And let us become your compassion and safe refuge. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Go out in joy. Be led forth in peace. And may the blessings of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer be with you now, each day and always. Amen. Thank you.